Hey guys, Marmalade here, and welcome to episode 12 of What I've Learned on the PCT. So we've got four more good questions, and uh, before we get started, please consider subscribing. Uh, this is my quest to reach 10,000 subscribers. So let's go, you guys. Uh, when I've looked at the reports, they show that only 10% of you are actually subscribers. It's free, so uh, why don't you help me out? Also hit the like button, that helps with the algorithms. Hit the notification bell in the upper right if you want to be notified every time I post a video. And let's get on with question number one. Okay, the first question is from Wolf Adventures. He's a friend of mine, and he asked me, uh, how was backpacking without a stove, and will you continue to do it? So, um, when I set out to do last year, do the chunk of the PCT from Mammoth area up, up to Northern Cal, uh, through Northern Cal last year, I didn't, I brought my stove. I didn't intend on doing that, but what happened was I started out with the hiking rev, and he only he doesn't cook. He doesn't even cold soak. He only uh, buys things like uh, tuna and meat and cheese and wraps and tortillas and nuts and bars and things like that. Doesn't have a stove whatsoever. But I brought mine. But um, I ended up trying it. I was really intrigued by it because, uh, as I've told you a million times, I'm trying to get lighter and get rid of things in my pack or go smaller. And uh, so although I had my stove and I was carrying it, when I went to towns, I'd buy, maybe if I had a four day stretch, I'd buy two dinners that I would cook and the other two, I would just be tortillas and cheese and meat and things like that, salami slices and pepperoni, things like that. And um, on the days where I had a really long, rough day, which are most days, but on the rougher days, uh, I didn't feel like cooking. So I would just wrap some stuff, eat a bar, eat some nuts or something or some candy. And I'd bring a bag of sometimes Doritos, things like that. And I was happy, so I realized that I don't really need a stove. I do enjoy it, and there'll be trips that I, I just went on a trip where I brought it. So um, to answer your question, uh, so far I've liked it. I haven't done it a ton. I did it for, what, three or four weeks, extended out on the PCT last year, and I'm doing it on my weekend uh, trips that I'm doing here in the desert uh, when I'm getting out with my friends. So, so far I like it. I will carry the cold soak jar, which is a one point, I think it's 1.8 ounces and my new wooden spoon that's uh, like one ounce. So under two ounces, I'll have a cold soaking jar. And uh, besides that, I'm mostly just gonna eat things and maybe I'll cold soak rice or a ramen once in a while. But yeah, so far I've really liked it. And thanks for that question. All right, question number two is from Dave N. I am planning to hike sections uh, A and B in 2024. Conservatively, I plan to cover 15 miles per day. What would you say the Goldilocks uh, start day to avoid uh, really hot days as well as avoid the snow up on Mount San Jacinto? So uh, that's a great one. And of course, every year is different. My year 19, the snow was insane. This year, it's pretty heavy too. I just was out there doing a section hike near Mount Laguna and you could see from about 150 trail miles away, you could see uh, San Jacinto is buried in snow and it's almost March. So uh, you have to kind of adjust your dates by the kind of weather that we're having that year and the snow levels. But um, I would say if you pick I would say pick uh, latest March, but really anywhere in April, especially uh, first or second week of a first or second week of April is perfect. Uh, it's not getting too hot yet. It's still a little cold at night, but uh, you're not going to have any higher temps than probably 75, 80 degrees at the most. Um, usually have a nice breeze going there, but I would say that's it. But the main thing is to keep an eye on. You'll know way ahead of time whether it's a big snowy or yeah, but or not. But uh, anyway, I hope that helps you. All right, question three is from Stefan Thompson. Um, what has been your weirdest encounter with a trail angel? So mine happened, uh, I had to think about this because most of mine have been pretty normal. My weirdest one was actually before 2019 when I started the trail. Uh, I was connecting all the dots. Uh, I was thinking I might maybe doing the PCT, but wasn't sure. Um, but I wanted to do from Idlewild, I hadn't had the section I'd done up over to Fuller Ridge, which is a 14 mile stretch. I've done that at that time four or five times, but I had I needed the 20 miles down to Cabazon and the 10 freeway and then further. So I connected from Campo all the way to there, but I just didn't have the section. So I thought of no other way but to go on the, the Facebook uh, PCT uh, Trail Angel groups. And I said, hey, you know, I'm looking to leave. And then I also wanted to go nine more miles to Whitewater Preserve. So I said, I'm looking to leave my car at Whitewater Preserve and I need a hitch over to Idlewild. They'll be glad to pay for gas and the time. And so somebody um, did offer, super nice guy, but it just kind of began to be weird. I, I purposely met him extremely early in the morning, like barely light out so that I could get the hour and a half drive up to Idlewild and get going because I had a long day. I've done that stretch before over to Fuller Ridge and it's a steep, tough one. 
And uh, it was also in June, it was hot. And so I wanted to get going before it was too hot. So everything, uh, he met me on time and we got in the car and went in, but um, it was just a weird experience because we never had a conversation. I just, uh, I don't know if he was excited to, to drive me or to meet somebody new, but he just talked about his whole life. And then we started this windy road up the backside of, to get up to Idlewild. Uh, we stopped about, he went excru excruciatingly slow like super slow and then we stopped a bunch of times he was showing me plant material and he showed me sage and all this stuff and um, I frankly needed to get to Idlewall to start hiking and um, every minute that went by that was longer than it should have been just kept ma making me think that it's going to make my day really really long on the other end trying to get to camp so it took it took hours upon hours to get me all the way to the trail and even then it was hard to just let me go and go hike it was weird and so uh, guy, there's nothing wrong with the guy. It just was a weird experience, and um, I don't think he understood that I was there to pay him to get me to the trail quick and get hiking, and that didn't happen. But I eventually got there, it worked out okay. But yeah, it made the, it meant that um, my day was really long. I had to hike in the primary heat of the day, and got to camp really late, so I didn't really get to enjoy my campground very much because it was almost dark, and I had to basically hurry, eat, and go to bed. So that's about my weirdest one. Thankfully, that's the weirdest. Nothing uh, crazy so far. All right, the fourth and final one for episode 12 of what I've learned on the PCT is from Carl Keating. Hey, Carl, what's up? Thanks for the question. In light of your having broken your ankle when on the PCT in Washington, have you modified your medical kit to include additional pain relievers? What medicines do you carry with you for that? So, actually, I don't. I carry ibuprofen. Um, sometimes I carry salt tablets, you know, when it's going to be real hot. But... Um, I got lucky because, lucky and unlucky, when I was on my through hike and I was going down from what I just previously mentioned, Idlewild, past Fuller Ridge, down that 20 miles to the 10 freeway, I had post hold all day the day before getting to Fuller Ridge, and so um, I had worn out my legs. It turned out that I didn't have uh, shin splints then, but on that steep downhill for like 8,000 feet down, I, I acquired shin splints on my left leg. I never had them, so I didn't know what they felt like, but... Uh, um, so because of that, I ended up having to walk. Uh, somebody in my group happened to have some KT tape. That relieved a lot of the, the pain, but it still hurt a lot. So when I got, I did about 80 more miles to Big Bear, and they had a Big Five sporting goods. So I bought a pair of um, compression socks, and I bought KT tape. So I just decided that I don't know what's going to happen this whole trip. That was only uh, Big Bear is 266 miles into it. So I didn't know if you know other things would happen. So I decided to bring a good uh, six or eight big pieces of KT tape and my compression socks from there on. So I finished the desert. That was only mile 266, the desert, 702 miles. Waited six weeks. I still had those in my kit. Flipped up to Washington and then, you know, when, what, a hundred and something miles in, I broke my ankle. Um, I didn't know it was broken, but I knew it was extremely, extremely jacked up, and it was a 10 on a 10 pain scale. So I was lucky because the KT tape helped, but it really didn't do much because it was broken. It wasn't a stress, you know, but what it really helped was the compression socks. So what I would do is in the morning each day, uh, I should say I was in a long stretch, and I chose to not push the button and get a helicopter to save me. I hiked 80 miles over four days, so I did four roughly 20-mile days. So the only way I could get my ankle to recover where it was decent was every every day after I heard it or broke it um, in my tent, I would lay down, get my air match set up, I'd put my pack and everything under my feet to get my foot up, uh, raised up, and I put a compression sock on that leg and get the swelling. It was it turned out to be black and blue and purple and huge, so I'd get the swelling down some. It never went down, but you know down from what I what I'd done to it all day, and then when I would start in the morning, it was actually okay. It still was really swollen, but it it maybe had half the pain that I got into camp with. And then as I hiked, it would actually be stiff for a couple miles and loosen up. And uphill seemed to not hurt it as much. Downhill really hurt and flat hurt. So certain uh, directions really hurt. I mean, just out of, out, of, out of this world pain sometimes. So to answer your question, really, no, I didn't bring anything extra. I don't bring anything extra now. I, have, I always bring the compression socks and I always bring KT tape. And that'll get me to the next town, at least, in case I'm really hurt. I mean, I have the Garmin if I have to push the button. But no, I, I don't bring any medications. My ankle's normal. I got lucky because the fracture was quite large, but it was in place. So I didn't have to have screws put in my ankle or reset my ankle. It was in place. So uh, basically, when I first 
I got off trail the first year. I got a boot and then I flew home with it. And then so one day later, I took the boot off. And I had a really good ankle brace, so I just kept that on all the time. And I'm an incredibly fast healer, so it it healed very very fast. So. Yeah, I don't bring anything extra, but I, I do recommend you guys, especially, well, any age really, but if you're older, bring compression socks are good for a lot of things, and then KT tape. All right, that completes episode 12. I hope you enjoyed that. Those are some fun questions. Uh, nothing super deep and riveting, but it's always good to know all the little things too. Uh, please, I'm looking for more questions. I've got enough for about one or two videos, and then that's it for now. So bring on more questions. We're getting close to, uh, it's towards the end of February. We're getting March 1st will be the first through hiker. So ask me some questions or if you're going this year do you have some last minute uh, things you're just worried about or wondering about and uh, of course please subscribe like I said I'm trying to get to 10,000 and uh, we're getting there so the channel starting to slowly grow a little faster so let's see uh, some love please if you can there's ways to support the channel in the description box below I have uh, I'm a uh, Amazon influencer I have a page on there if you want to get some gear it costs you the same as it normally would but if you buy it off of my page I get a little kickback that helps me out and uh, you know, I'll be getting back on the PCT to hopefully be my final year this year. So all those uh, little bits help a lot. And um, make sure you hit the like button. And until next time, we'll definitely see you down the trail.